I keep getting phone calls asking me about what's this course all about? How does it work? And I think well, I've created lots of web pages, but I understand it is not a simple course. And to really understand it, you have to read lots of web pages. And at the end of term, who has time to do that? So I'm going to give you um, a very quick overview of um, what's the course all about? How does it work? Uh, as if you would just call me up and ask that question. So there might still be questions outstanding, but I will do my best. So uh, first of all, how you find out about how the courses are, you go into book, course or webinar. And the th first thing that tends to confuse people is there are a number of different options and they say, well, which one should I go on? So let me explain them to you. The 11th and the 25th are identical courses. They teach identical things. They just have a different start date. Now, what I want to do is I want to help the students learn as much as they can and make the most of the summer holiday. So I always schedule one straight after private schools break up and one straight after um, state schools break up. Now, if you've arranged to go on holiday straight after the private schools break up, then obviously you can come along on the course on the 25th. I don't recommend if you're only going away for a week doing the course while you're away because that's a bit mean on the child. If you're going away for six weeks, then yeah, do the course while you're away. A lot of people do that. But if you're only going away for a week or two, then that, that could be quite hard on anyone. It's like a punishment. So um, the difference between the 11th and the 25th and the 18th is the 18th is only for older students. I'm really looking for teenagers. You certainly have to be in secondary school because it's too long a day. It's more intensive and it's not going to work for younger children. Now, there is an, uh, a, a time when it, it might be better for you to do that is if that's the only one that you can do and then we will work it out for younger children. So I have one younger sibling on that course at the moment. Now, these other courses, the Refresh and Improve, they are only for people that have already been on the course. They are a lot cheaper. They're assuming that the child already knows the full keyboard and they're just going to learn the technology, um, do some of the tasks, get better speed, better accuracy, because you can always improve. And what we really want is we want by the time our uh, students are doing GCSEs and A-levels, we want them to be able to type as quickly and as accurately as possible. So it is worth investing time over some, the summer holidays to, um, to do that. And most students are really happy to return because they know it was, it was quite enjoyable and um, they really improved and they want to improve. They want to get better exam results. So what other questions have I made a note of? Oh, uh, how does it work? It is not a typing course. It is three different types of course altogether. So first of all, there's a lot of help for parents in supporting dyslexics or um, supporting learning at home and utilizing uh, typing and technology to get better grades at school. Now, if your child is 16, 17, 18, or even 14, 15, and really highly motivated and tech savvy, then you probably won't need to be involved that much as a parent. But if your child is younger, and really I'd, I'd recommend every parent also learns about the technology because for younger children, they'll be, oh, that's great, that's interesting, I can do that, but they won't be using it straight away. And therefore you don't want them to have to, you know, um, well, they can come back in the summer on the refresh courses and learn it again. But it, through the year, there might be something that would really help them. And you, if you know about it, then you can prompt them to use it. So just because they don't need it right now doesn't mean that it won't be helpful in March or April or May next year. Uh, so, th so we have parents, we have the Type touch typing, and that is really right at the beginning when they're really supervised in small groups with um, a dedicated webcam, looking at a dedicated keyboard. And by the end of that, we know that all the children know where all the, the uh, letters are. They don't need to look, and then we set work for them to do every day. And that's the distance learning section. And in the first section, in the first four days, I show um, 
how technology can help students get better grades because once they know that it gives them the motivation to bother to learn because they say oh wow it will really help me but we don't go into detail because you don't need tight supervision for that and then every week we look at a different technology to uh, get better grades and uh, they are really helpful and as I say if you have a younger child I really recommend that parents really learn all that stuff as well so we have touch typing we have technology and we have um, how training for parents as well so the other question I get asked a lot is well what if I going away on holiday um almost everyone that comes on the course goes away on holiday at some point um, if you're camping and there's no wireless internet then they can't practice that week or that, that those weeks, it's still worth doing the course, but it's best if they don't have a break. But it, it, it does happen, children do have a break. But if they cannot practice after the supervised section of the course, then it really isn't doing it, it isn't worth doing it. You've got to do some practice over the summer holidays to really embed the muscle memory. Another question I'm asked is um, how old do you have to be or when is it too old? It's You're never too old if a child wants to learn. I, I often have 17 year olds come in because they want to get much quicker before they do their A-levels and they're really grateful they did it. I have 16 year olds for the same reason for their GCSEs. I really recommend older children come in and do it. Um, uh, but anything from 11 up is great. I often get requests for children younger than that at eight and nine. I don't say you can't, but I say if you book in, be prepared to say it's not working. We'll try again in another year and you know, we'll, I'll just visit, put your place forward for another year. But the biggest thing I think you need to think about with younger children is are they writing essays? Are they writing reports? Because if they're not, and then they're not going to use the skill, they will lose the muscle memory. So it's worth waiting until that time. Some parents understandably feel like they just cannot be bothered pushing and nagging and cajoling and bribing their child to type over the summer holidays. And I totally understand that. But I've designed the course to take that pressure off parents. So one, I try to get them motivated because they see themselves what difference it will make. So they have intrinsic motivation. But then in the weekly sessions, I reward um, who's practiced the most and who's progressed the most. I do practice because you know, some people don't take to it um, typing as, as easily as others and I want them to be re rewarded for putting the effort in but I also reward people that have made the most progress um, so we they, they win Amazon vouchers and they actually get really competitive about getting on the leaderboard and winning prizes but also um, I do WhatsApp so for as long as a child has their own phone they have little WhatsApp messages saying like, don't forget to practice, or I'm gonna work out the winners in three hours, so get practicing now. Or they might get an individual message saying, look, I noticed you haven't practiced for the last few days. Is there a problem? Or wow, I see your speed's really gone up. So I'm in communication with the children prompting them so you don't have to and if there are any concerns I make sure I let parents know really quickly so I do keep you very well informed now I think that is everything I was going to show you um, I could just very quickly show you around here I'll put my glasses on to do that so now that you know the 11th and the 25th are the same the 18th is for older children and these two are for returning students um, so let's go in and have a quick look if we go into any one. Now, the registration for this is closing this Sunday night. You can see the dates that of the supervised training, of the distance learning and the parent webinars. Uh, you can see a course overview and that just goes into more detail. It shows you the sort of results that we get, um, some of the feedback that we get from students. But there is a lot more feedback within Google reviews, but students do tend to enjoy it. And um, I've got some videos of younger students saying why they enjoyed it. And then I have these frequently asked questions. So any questions that you might have will be down there. Um, I would have a look at that. Another question I get asked quite a bit is how much is it? And if you just go down to the course, because it all depends on 
the, le the amount of teaching time. So the more teaching time you have, um, the longer it is. Uh, sorry, the more expensive it is. But it is very cost effective. I price it about £15 a teaching hour. And as my consultancy rate is £70 an hour, it is, it's making my consultancy far more accessible to lots of families. And if anyone just cannot afford it, I am always open to doing bursary places um, you know, for a reduced rate because um, there is equipment that you need to pay for. But um, I hope that helps.